Hi guys, I'm super excited for this video. I know it can really help you. I really hope it does. I'm gonna be going through some very tough multiple choice questions to make sure that you guys can smash it to make sure you don't get them wrong. Now, multiple choice questions are absolute gifts from the economics gods. And remember, we should be thankful to the gods, the economics gods, when we have lovely multiple choice questions out there. But we don't wanna get them wrong. They're there for you to smash and get the very, very high marks. So my thinking was, if you can see how I process multiple choice questions, how I answer them, the tricks, the techniques that I use, hopefully you can follow and then get them right more of the time. In this video, we're gonna look at calculation-based multiple choice questions. These are very, very common in paper three exams. So we are gonna be covering those and making sure that you know how to answer them with key equations and conditions necessary. I have an awesome video on key equations and conditions. Make sure you've watched that take everything down, memorize it, and you'll find how much easier these questions are when you know the equations. Let's get into it, guys. How do we calculate real GDP? Oh my God, no one knows. Let's cover it, let's go. Okay, guys, what a beauty of a question this is. First thing, we have a table, uh, and that means the first few lines are just gonna be pure and utter waffle, right? And we have that here, right? All those three lines are saying is exactly what we can see in the table, and we have eyes. We've got eyes. We don't need to worry about stuff like that. Okay, so we can ignore all that and go straight to the question, which is down here. And the question says, using the data, what's the increase in real GDP per capita between 05 and 2014? Well, we know that 2005 is the base year and as an index value, everything in 05 has a value of 100. And that means real GDP per capita in 2005 will be 100, right? That's the base year. So the question is, how do we work out real GDP per capita? Right, here is an equation that pretty much nobody knows so let's go real GDP. Real GDP has got this equation. We take nominal GDP and we divide by a price index and then multiply by 100. And that will give you real GDP. Now, fundamentally, guys, all of these numbers in this equation need to be in index form. Now, you're lucky here because the numbers are in index form. Okay, but everything needs to be in index form because we're dividing by a price index. So we need to keep it all in the same form, and that is index form. That's real GDP. Now, what about real GDP per capita? So real GDP now per capita is exactly the same equation. So nominal GDP divided by a price index multiplied by 100. But now we need to divide that number, because that's real GDP, by a population. But again, this needs to be an index form, and we have that population index, right? And then multiply all of that by 100, and that will give you real GDP per capita as an index number. So let's apply all of that here. This is very simple. We need to work out real GDP per capita in 2014. So in 2014, nominal GDP was, where is it? 200, so it's 200 there, divided by the price index, which is 150, multiplied by 100. And if you work all that out, that will give you a figure of 133.33. So that's real GDP. That's the top part of this equation here. That's real GDP. But now we need per capita. So we need to divide that. So we need to go 133.33, divide by the population index, which is 120, and then multiply that by 100. And if we do that, that will give you an exact answer of 111.11. Now we know that in 2005, real GDP per capita as an index number is 100. In 2014, we've just worked out that it's 111.11. As a percentage change, well, that gives you 11.11% uh, increase in real GDP per capita. And therefore, the answer is approximately 10%. You see how easy that was? Ridiculously simple. Now this next question coming up requires you to calculate an index number. This is very standard, very common. Again, the key equation and conditions video will tell you how to do this. Once you have the equation for an index number, your life is simple. Let's cover this very, very bog standard type of multiple choice. First line, oh, it's that waffle again. We have eyes, remember? We have eyes, we can see what the table is showing us. So what is the question asking? The question is saying, if these figures are converted to index form with 2013 as your base year, so if it was me, I'd just add that up here and say 2013 is the base year, what would be the value of the index in 2016? Okay, so all we need to do is basically convert that number into an index number. We need the equation though. We need the equation. Such a beautiful 
equation. How do you convert a raw number to an index number? Well, you take the raw number, the raw number that you're looking to convert, and you divide it by the Bezier raw number. So the Bezier raw number. And then you multiply by 100. So in this case, the raw number we want to convert is 271. What's the raw number in the base here? The base here is 2013. The raw number there is 215. And then you multiply that by 100, and that will give you 126.04, I think, something like that, which means that the answer to the nearest whole number is going to be 126. Easy. You see how important that equation is? Man, so important. The key equations and conditions video is your absolute godsend. Watch that, get these equations. Look how easy these questions are after that. Man, we are smashing it left, right, and center. This is just too simple right now. You can see how beautiful these questions are when you know your equations, when you know your conditions. This next question is an absolute stinker though. A lot of students message me and tell me how on earth do you do something like this? Take the process down and you'll be fine. All right, what are we doing? Again, the first few lines, waffle, we've got eyes. We can see what the table is showing us. So here's the question. If year one is the base year, what is the value of the weighted index in year two? So the real question is, how do we calculate a weighted price index? Well, here is the process. First thing, you have to convert. You have to convert prices in that year where they ask you to work out the weighted index. So convert the prices into index numbers, into index form. Okay, so we have to work out the year two weighted index and therefore we have to convert 12 and 18 into index form. We can use the equation we've just covered to make sure that's very simple. Once we've done that, we need to multiply. We need to multiply the index numbers we've just calculated. So the index numbers that we've just calculated by their weight. Once we've done that, we need to add up. We need to add up all the weighted prices. That will give you the overall weighted price of the basket. And then last stage, you've got to then divide by the total number of weights. So divide by the total number of weights used. So add up all the weights, divide by that number. Let's do that. So we need to work it out in year two. So in year two, what's the weighted price of product X? Uh, well, we need to convert 12 to an index number first, okay? So how do we do that? Remember, we take the raw number 12 divided by the base year raw number, which is 10, and then multiply by 100. So that's gonna give us 120. So we have 120 is the index price of product X in year two, whereas for uh, product Y, we have to convert 18 into index number. So it's gonna be 18 divided by 20, multiply by 100, and that's gonna give you 90. All right, so perfect. What do we need to do then? Multiply the index numbers by their weight. So 120 times two, that's gonna give you 240. 90 times one is gonna give you 90. We then need to add up the weighted prices and that's gonna give us 330. And then we have to divide by the total number of weights, which is three, two plus one, right, three. 330 divided by three is 110. And there is your weighted price index in year two and therefore the answer is c 110 we're laughing man i'm loving this kicking butt right here happy days so you see guys so easy once you know the equation absolute piece of cake key equations and conditions video same for the next one looking at yields on government bonds and now guys a question like this that links to government bonds this again is super super simple have a quick read of this you can see a bit of background first that the government has issued a £100 bond with a coupon of £3 per annum and 40 years to maturity. And then two years later, other assets are giving yields of 6%. What's going to happen to the price of this bond and the yield? Okay, so what we need is the yield equation. Very, very important. And here it is. So to work out the yield on a government bond, we take the coupon, we divide by the market price. That's fundamental. The market price of the bond and then we multiply by 100. Now hopefully you can see when the bond was issued, the yield is obviously 3%. Hopefully that's obvious. If not, use the equation. So initially when the bond was issued, right, the yield, coupon is three divided by the market price, which at that point just been issued, so it's gonna be 100 times by 100 and that's gonna give you your 3% yield. But then it's saying two years later, the return on other assets, the yield on other assets have gone up to 6%. 
So if government bonds like this are only giving 3% and other assets are giving 6%, then clearly people are going to be demanding more of those assets and they're going to be demanding less of these government bonds. So we know that if demand is going to decrease, the price of the bond is going to decrease. And remember the inverse relationship between the price of a bond and the yield? So if the price goes down, the yield on this government bond is going to rise. And immediately that gives you the answer of B. The price of the bond will have fallen, but the yield will have increased. And if you take any random number now, so the coupon will remain at three, I'm gonna give you the exact number to make it equalize to six. So let's say the price of the bond has fallen to 50 pounds, three divided by 50 pounds now, which is gonna be the market price, let's say, multiplied by 100 will give you a 6% yield. So according to this question, that would be the exact price it falls to then to then equalize the return on other assets in the economy. But you can see how a fall in the market price will lead to an increase in the yield. The answer is B, easy. The yield equation is fundamental. So you see on that one, guys, it's all about knowing the process. Once you've got the process, just follow the order and you'll get the correct answer. Simple, simple stuff. Key equations and conditions, that's the way to go. These are some of the harder calculation questions, but there are plenty of them. Stay tuned for the next video. We're going to continue and look at some more. Thanks for watching.